The ultimate predator is actually the plants. They control the world. We're just their fertilizer. Hello, carnivores, and welcome to session number 35. Dr. Robert Kiltz is with us today. He is a renowned physician and fertility doctor featured in the Wall Street Journal, CNBC, Parents Magazine, and the Today Show. Dr. Kiltz is also a diplomat of the American Board of Obstetrics and Gynecology and fellowship trained at board certified in reproductive and endocrinology and infertility. Dr. Kiltz is the founder, director, and practicing physician at CNY Fertility. He is a previous clinical faculty member at UCSF Medical School and a current clinical faculty member at University of Syracuse Medical School. Having decades of clinical practice, he has discovered that infertility and virtually all other diseases that we humans suffer from, for that matter, are caused primarily by what foods we eat and how often we eat them. Carnivore Conversations is a radical and enlightening examination of how the keto carnivore diet can help to improve a wide range of complex health and environmental issues contributed to by the standard American diet. My personal favorite nutrition podcast is Carnivore Conversations. Lots of my friends in that show. Some of my favorite episodes, Ken Berry, Anthony Chafee, Sean Baker, Robert Sykes, Coach Bronson, Lily Kane, Danny Conway. Um, lots of familiar faces, lots of familiar friends on that channel. Really, really highly recommend this podcast. As a matter of fact, I just got done listening to it right now on my run before coming into the office. <laughs> uh, it was the one with Britain. That was a good episode, too. I think it was like the second the second last one. Uh, Dr. Kiltz is also frequently featured on dietdoctor.com, on TEDx, and on fertility and dietary conferences such as Carnivorathon. Before we get into the meat, here is our Spotify podcast review of the week. It is from Roman from Spokane, Washington, United States. He would like to say, great interview and super knowledgeable guy. Great conversation about what carbs do to our human body. Thanks, Roman. That was an eye-opening conversation. Not what most people want to hear, but it's certainly the truth nonetheless. So that's what we try to preach on this channel. Glad it made some sense. That was on uh, session number 31, actually, with Stephen Thomas, the UK carnivore. So Stephen certainly has a gift of making complex subjects simple for us bodybuilders and coaches. All right, Dr. Kilt, what an honor. Welcome to Carnivore Coach's Corner, sir. Coach Colt, thank you so much for the invitation. I really appreciate it. It's uh, such a pleasure to be uh, uh, listening and learning from you also, by the way. And I'm glad we're here to, to share some thoughts and ideas of health, wellness, and uh, faith in life. Oh, my God. Gosh, well, thank you for that. I, I don't know what you could possibly learn from me right now, but uh, let's start with you if that's okay. <laughs> uh, you teach the, the B-E-B-B-I-S diet. So I assume that from all the meetups that I've been listening to of yours, that means bacon, eggs, beef, and butter. Am I well, on it's, right it's the It's the baby's diet. Uh, bacon, eggs, butter, beef. Um, th there is an ice cream in there for Kiltz's ice cream and salt. And uh, since I'm a baby maker, the you know had to come up with an acronym that you know so highlighted uh, making babies by eating the baby's diet. Making babies. I love it. Making babies is fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, I mean, ultimately, there's so much challenge in this world over many diseases, and infertility is just one that is on the rise, and it's in younger and younger people. And so I fell uh, upon nutrition a number of years ago, and have found that carnivore is the top of the line and is the one that I talk about the most. And uh, Ken Berry's got the triple BE, uh, bacon, butter, beef, and eggs. I threw in a little bit uh, extra, the Kiltz's ice cream and salt. So I mix it up a little bit. I'm the baby, the baby's diet. <laughs> I love it. Well, that answered my next question then was what does the I and the S stand for? So that makes sense. Ice cream and salt. So ice, ice cream is, is kind of your thing, huh? Well, I grew up, my mother loved ice cream, my grandmother loved ice cream, and life is meant to be tr a treat, not a cheat. And, you know, this, the keto carnivore lifestyle, and ultimately uh, throwing in a little bit of sugar in an ice cream that I make, I don't think has any harm. Uh, it's mostly fat, eggs, cream, a little bit of butter and salt if you want. Uh, and you could use honey, fruit. Uh, you can use cane sugar, uh, maple syrup, or you don't have to add that at all. And it's still spectacularly good. So life, you got to treat yourself, never cheat. And uh, a little bit of, of uh, cookie cake or ice cream from time to time, I say is okay. But if it's of any frequency or significance, don't do it. Wow. I love it. 
That, like that, that is wonderful advice. Hopefully, I'm not too far off from what you recommend. I think that I'm pretty much there. Um, my my diet is mostly ba- is mostly beef and butter. Um, I'm on a ketogenic modified lion diet right now, and so very very similar. Um, the only thing that I'm adding in is 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 keto bricks. Really, other than that, it's it's a pretty strict lion, pretty strict carnivore. So yeah, I call it the lion's way. You know, we're always mixing it up, uh, mm-hmm. and we are lions, um, but we've been uh, convinced to eat like pigs, cows, and sheep. And you've heard the term, you are what you eat. Wow. Well, if you eat plants of any significance or frequency, ultimately you're going to get down to that omnivore or herbivore. Um, and, and we are purely, we're, we're omnivores. We can eat these things, but, um, it, it turns out that eating the plants is the cause of disease. Lean meat is also the cause of disease and not eating fat is really the cause of disease. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was in the sauna, um, yesterday after, after my workout. And, uh, there was another, there was a physical therapist that was giving nutritional advice to someone that looked like he was about in his sixties. And she was asking him, how, how often do you, um, how often do you consume red meat? And he's like, only once or twice a month. Usually it's lean. I got lots of plants in making sure I'm getting all my fiber in. And I, I, I had to leave. I'm like, man, if I hear one more word of this, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to ruin this conversation that these guys are having, but it's so counterintuitive. It, it, it is, but we've been eating plants for thousands of years mm-hmm. and, and uh, hunting is a hardship. Um, and, and when we either found it difficult to find the animals and the population grew, uh, we went to something simple and, and sedentary and agricultural lifestyle um, is, 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 it seems simple and easy, but mm-hmm. most of us don't realize the amount of slaves, soldiers, peasants, and prisoners it took to create a plant-based le- uh, eating uh, habit uh, for humans in this globe. But if you think about it, um, the peasants and the prisoners, the slaves and the soldiers kind of were the workers of the of of all the lands. And and it typically it's not the wealthy uh, that are doing the work uh, to uh, grow the food and put it on the on the table. It's mm-hmm. the slaves and it's the the peasants. It's the serfs and 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 um, the the mighty leaders of the world made the hunting grounds off limits. And they told the masses not to eat the meat. The, the, the same story is told today. And we are highly addicted to plants. If you think about cocaine, heroin, marijuana, nicotine, caffeine, and sugars all come mm-hmm. from plants. And they're highly addictive chemicals. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so um, the, the, the message is um, eat, the, eat the plants, the fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts, um, lean meat. Don't eat the fat and stay away from red meat. And ultimately, the rise of disease is going up and up and up, especially now that we have the marketing, the world uh, marketing that it is today, which has been for hundreds of years and it's getting worse and worse and worse. Wow. That's 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 so that's so impactful. What you said about how plants are addicting, because I because I agree with that Um, and, and, and especially uh, athletes that are on an all plant-based diet. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not aware of one that doesn't have a laundry list of supplements. Um, compare, compare that to after I stopped taking all my cell supplements to do the lion diet strict for seven weeks straight, I got better results doing that. And I haven't even decided, and, and I haven't even added any of my supplements back in and you yeah, can't it, do that on a plant-based diet. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's a hard one. I, 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 I believe that the The leading causes of disease, and there are five of them that I usually talk about, and the number one is plant sugars, which all plants, lettuce, um, any fruit, any fiber, any vegetable, kale, asparagus, uh, onions, uh, potatoes, tomatoes, they all break down to simple sugar, essentially. And if you think about it, sunlight, carbon dioxide in the air, and water make a long-chain carbon particle called a plant every tree. And if you think about the longevity of some plants, they live for thousands of years uh, because they're, they're rugged and they can tolerate it. Um, We're now, we're now eating all of these things and they, they basically break down to sugar, which glycates. Glycation is the opposite of glycosylation. 
glycation is like rust inside of our body to every cell of our body, especially to proteins. And it causes abnormal folding of the proteins, which causes prions and, and uh, amyloid deposits, amyloidosis. And I believe that amyloidosis, by, by the way, is systemic and one of the leading causes of every disease in our body, uh, deposits of amyloids. But then there's the chemicals that plants make. And think about heroin, cocaine, marijuana, nicotine, caffeine. Those are chemicals that plants mm -hmm. make. And they disturb our normal function of our body, uh, neurologically, uh, musculoskeletally, and in all ways. It alters your state of mind. Yeah, your state of mind. But it also disrupts because, because estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone also are made in plants. And so when you eat a plant, you may be getting the estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone that's disrupting your normal reproductive hormonal function for men and women at all ages. And it's happening in utero, by the way. And then, and then um, the plant antigens, lectins, oxalates, phytates, gluten, um, oh, those are all antigens. They're glycoproteins, glycoproteins that don't break down to simple sugars or simple amino acids in our gut. They manage to get through our gut after disrupting the glycocalyx. Now, the glycocalyx, uh, the glycocalyx is, is, is um, the glycocalyx is, is the layer of sugars and proteins that protect every cell of our body. And, and, and uh, the glycocalyx of our skin, of our gut, when it gets bro broken down, the lectins, oxalates, phytates get into our bloodstream, uh, into our lymphatics, and they are deposited in every nook and cranny of our body. And I think those are the amyloid uh, particles, the prions uh, that, that we are likely to blame for a lot of the inflammation of our body. And, um, and plants are sugar, and sugar in the gut comes with usually microbes there, bacteria, yeast, and viruses. But the bacteria and yeast, when they ferment, when they, when they eat the sugars, they make alcohol. Mm -hmm. And alcohol in our gut, again, we're not drinking it, but when you're eating a plant-based, lean meat diet, you're absolutely making alcohol in your gut. And wow. so it's going systemically, uh, and it makes gas, heat, alcohol, uh, methane, and aldehydes. And those are all damaging for your internal uh, organs. <laughs> it's so funny you say that because uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, but um, so, so a, a lot of our clients that 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 I coach that are on, that are on the Lion Diet, we have this joke that we just that we we just never fart, we never pass gas. <laughs> but as soon as we eat anything that's not on our diet, we start, we, we, we notice it right away. And so I'll have, I, I, I have gas when I, when I eat keto bricks, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll fart like an hour later. <laughs> or, or if you drink uh, 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 sparkling uh, uh, water with gas, with, with bubbles, uh, yeah. uh, sparkling water that, that will actually also uh, travel through your gut and uh, produce either burps or, or, or a, a lower uh, gas. Wow. So, and, so and, Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry to cut you off. Do you do you do you, uh, do you abstain from uh, carbonated beverages for that reason? No, no, no. I do eat it. I do drink uh, carbonated water. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love sparkling water. Okay, that's my that's my my general go to. Uh, Topo Chico um, and, and uh, Gerald Steiner. I do Sarah Toga Perrier, but mostly Gerald Steiner because it's a little more mineralized to me, and I love it. But I don't stay away from that. Yeah, we just get the cheap ones from Costco. <laughs> yeah, the cheap ones are good too. Whatever you ones you're getting, the 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 you know there's the the value of food. You know, do you buy expensive food, more affordable food? Um, you can do you can do carnivore on a budget, for sure. Absolutely, and yeah. you know I tend to eat mostly ribeye steaks, but there's great burgers, there's great brisket. Go to your rancher, you know, get half a cow, your farmer. Uh, or 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 the or the butcher, and you know, going to Walmart and Aldi's and many other places, you can get really great food. Costco, yeah. Or you could just be like Robert Sykes and I and go shoot a deer. <laughs> yeah, well, that's mostly, it. Now, the one thing about free. deer, it's lean, and so you gotta you gotta add the fat. See, this is the one thing about keto, carnivore, yeah. and paleo diets. Even Atkins, yeah. we're missing eating the fat. And by the way, adipose tissue likely is the is the is the best a uh, part of the animal to eat because it contains amino acids proteins contains the sugars that are that are part of the glycobiome 
Uh, and most people have not heard of the glycobiome and glycobiology, but basically glucose is not the, the, the energy for your body. It's for glycosylation. And the majority of your proteins are glycosylated with sugars, glucose, galactose, mannose, xylose, arabinose. Oh, let's say I got a list of xylose, uh, uh, N-acetyl, neuramic acid, fucose, uh, hydronic acid. These are most sugars people have never heard of. They're as important or more important than glucose, I believe. The problem is we're eating plants and lean meat which basically all converts to sugar and it causes glycation in the liver and liver damage. It causes type two diabetes, type two, type two diabetes is liver damage and type one diabetes is pancreatic damage. Right. But most people don't know that liver damage causes type two diabetes. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I That's, literally did not know that until, until right now. I thought that I thought that was just from chronic overconsumption of sugar. Well, sugars, plants, and antigens, they cause damage to our organs. Mm -hmm. The liver is the first place for the majority of what you eat that breaks down to the the uh, macronutrients uh, go directly into the liver, into the hepatic portal bloodstream that go to the liver. And, and so the liver is the thing that we have to look at more carefully and realize that liver damage causes glycation, which causes an, a damage to those cells that convert amino acids and sugars to fat. So as the cells of the liver get damaged, the ability of insulin to convert your level of, of, uh, of sugars and amino acids to fat slows down. So now your liver, your, your glucose and amino acids systemic levels rise. And so what else rises with that insulin? So you're constantly spilling over, uh, sugars and amino acids that cause glycation, which acts, which essentially cause all, all the diseases that we experience. And you'll notice it right away in the form of joint inflammation. And right lack of lack of energy your sleep quality is going to start getting messed up yeah that's if you've been meat-based and then you go back into reintroducing a lot of those plants plants yeah that and, and there's this icd-9 book which has you know, hundreds of thousands if not millions of of codes uh that label our diseases and realizing that um the they're all caused by primarily the same thing which is a plant-based protein-based low-fat diet Wow. May I see that book again? Yep. It's um, ICD-10. Uh, it's the complete official code book. See, we have a code for every condition a human being experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, do we really have this many problems that are caused by all different things? Does that make any sense? No. <laughs> and if you, if you look at Occam's Razor, I don't know if you've ever heard of Occam's Razor. Uh-uh. Ackerman was a philosopher and a scientist years ago that uh, coined, coined the term Occam's razor, or the simple answer is the one. So we make complications out of things. But did God really make such a complicated world? Probably not. He made a very simple world. We just think in very complicated ways. And if you think about it, the number of diseases are on the rise. It's getting, it's affecting more people around the globe and younger yeah. and younger and younger. And yet we're exercising more. We're working out more. We're eating a healthy diet more. And, and yet we're getting sicker. My, my good friend in medical school, Dave Kilmer uh, died of lymphoma at age 52. And my beautiful sister, Marianne died at 52 of type one diabetes in the lengthy complications. The one thing they both had in common is a, they ate, primarily a a healthy diet and they mm -hmm. lived a healthy lifestyle and although my sister had diabetes for years the american diabetic association recommends a a um, a low fat um, plant-based primarily diet in lean meats and she stuck to that she worked hard until mm -hmm. she died of of, of uh, heart failure and mm -hmm. and she's a wonderful woman she was always happy no matter what condition or experience she had uh, and and I can tell you, my friend Dave Kilmer said to me, God's got this.
when he was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, this is what has been my, my energy, my fuel for the fire that drives me to recognize that as a doctor, my job is to help people and not make it complicated or expensive, but help people find the way on this journey. And that's what I'm here to do. That, that, and that's your approach so much, Doc. Oops, sorry. I think we had a little bit of a lag. Can you hear, can you, can you hear me and see me okay? Okay. Good. Yeah, I can hear you now. Um, yeah, we have, we have a, we have a, Okay, good. We, ha we have a thunderstorm here, and sometimes it causes us to lose power, but it's been a while since that's happened. So <laughs> God's talking to us. Ho hopefully, uh, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. It's all good. Exactly it's all it good. <laughs> um, darn it. There was something that I wanted to touch on based on what you said, and I can't remember what it was. Um, well, the, let me get to let me get to the fifth leading cause of disease is yeah okay that's exercise. actually what i was going to ask if you wouldn't yeah. mind just keep going yeah. through all of them <laughs> yeah, yeah excessive <laughs> exercise excessive exercise and again there was a recent uh, uh report that just came out that found that exercise does not uh give you uh increased longevity and now they didn't talk about how you feel and whether or not you're feeling better in life but my bet is is that exercise shouldn't be our focus in life it should be creativity and connections Hmm. And the more we're we're participating in life, doing the things that make us joyful and happy. I do pottery. Uh, I sell kilts cups online. I do paintings and uh, uh, poetry. Uh, I've written a number of books. I, I hack my guitar and I love to sing. Um, and and I just love connecting and helping people. I'm a surgeon. Uh, I, I, I help people in medicine. And I found uh, the connections that we're gaining through the keto carnivore lifestyle is, is, is amazing. Wow. Here again, that is so counterintuitive. If somebody is out of shape, what's the first thing that, that, that they think they need to do? They need to go bust their butt in the gym and they need to, they need to be crawling by the time they get out of there. And then they don't have time to, they, they don't have the focus or the energy. I guess here, let, let, let me, if you don't mind, let, let, let me back up um, a, a, a year ago, I was doing an hour uh, a day of low intensity cardio. For, for for conditioning this is for a bodybuilding competition and so it got me shredded but if if i could go back and do it again there's a number there, there's a lot of different things that i would do differently and that's uh number one on the list um because i was I, I was just trying to get lean enough i was the leanest person on the stage but then i look back and i'm like um i, I there, there's there's a there's a lot of time that i was not at church there's a lot of there's there's a lot of things that i used to enjoy that i put on the back burner so reintroducing those th those in has been has, has been key just for my mental health. I'm playing music again. Um, I'm, I'm I'm spending more time with my kids and spending more time with my wife and less time in the gym. That is the entire goal right now. Well, I think you know I used to run for for you know do ten miles three times a week and I I swam and and I biked for three hours a uh, number of times a week and and I'd listen to a book of inspiration by the way. So I'm not saying exercise isn't good and if you're really down and out getting on a bike or getting in the gym or doing that exercise, I think will get you motivating, get moving. Yeah. So, and, and I can't remember, it, Oh, Zach bitter. I think it was, he said, uh, motion is motivating. Motion is motivating. Mm -hmm. And once you get moving, then you get a chance to see and observe and open up to what's going on. And if you go to the gym with other people, you connect, you're going to find someone like a coach Colt, who's going to, you know, be there and, and have some great words of inspiration. Cause that's what we all need. We need the inspiration from others. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't exercise. You know, I, I was hurting all my joints from doing it too much. So I also slowed down. I do a little bike. I get in my gym a little bit. I do some weights, you know, walking and weights, but um, I get in my pottery studio. But I, I think the resistance work is really the space that you want to be in. But the one thing I learned is when you change your diet, oh, my God, the, the, the game changer to me is carnivore. Yep. And and uh, much less exercise. Uh, the 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 extra weight comes off. The muscles show up, yep. uh, and your brain is clearer than anything ever in the in the universe. Yep. Uh, do, do you think that most people just really don't give um, a lower cardio approach um, that's that's focused on resistance training primarily for exercise, kind of the way that you're describing? Let me let me know if I'm off base on any of this. Um, and, and having, and having your diet be what does most of the work for your health and for your aesthetic journey, for your athletic performance. 
Do you think one of the reasons why that's not a popular approach is just because it doesn't sound appetizing? People don't want to give up their carbs. They're scared to go from five meals a day thinking that they have to start intermittent fasting right away. Is uh, Do you think some people are just intimidated to get started? Well, the message is fruits and vegetables, seeds and nuts and lean meat. Yeah. And that fat is bad for you. And, and, uh, which is not true. Eating fat suppresses inflammation. It's the fuel that your body wants you to eat. And, and so we're all, the message is so strong, uh, to eat a plant-based low animal fat diet that that's, that's our, that's our space. And yeah, we're a little addicted to it. it makes us feel better. And this carnivore stuff is like crazy. It just doesn't make sense. What are you talking about? Heart disease is caused by high cholesterol and, and fatty meat and red meat causes colon cancer. And I'm like, well, have you ever seen meat in the toilet? You see plants, but never meat. <laughs> That's so true. All right. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, when you look in the toilet and you see those plants look the same, nothing looks different, man. You change, you change. Like I found that out after I started changing my, my, my kids' diapers. It's like when they, when they eat cashews, the cashews are still in the diaper. They did not get digested. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. And by the way, our children are suffering in utero because the moms are eating a standard American diet with it's almond milk, oat milk, coconut milk, and, yeah. and soy milk, and all the things that are that are industrial products. Remember the, 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 the steak and the eggs are, are, are not industrial. I mean, obviously they're, they're industrially produced and, 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 and delivered to us. Uh, that's our modern world. You know, if you can go find pasture raised, local farming, local ranchers and things like that, that is the very best. Uh, but, um, we are duped. And so as we're growing in the carnivore space and, and people are seeing uh, yourself, Sean Baker, Ken Berry, Lisa Wiedemann, Bella Ma. I mean, I get the list that goes long and I apologize. I'm not mentioning so many amazing people. Mm -hmm. um, and I've learned from them that has helped me in, in, in eliminating 99%. Now I occasionally eat a French fry with cooked in duck grease with, with the sour cream and, grease all over it from the steak i think you said um, you usually I, put mayonnaise on your french fries too right well what i really prefer is sour cream or duck uh, or, or 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 duck grease mayonnaise or Ooh. butter marie the emmerich is a really go to marie emmerich stuff she has a really awesome. great butter butter mayonnaise you, you see soy mayonnaise is not the one you want to be consuming right because you know but that's our historic where to go to but when you go to uh, add butter cream cheese um, I had a little bit of blue cheese uh, also and eggs. Oh my God. It's, it's amazing. I'm writing down duck fat mayo. Hopefully there's a recipe or something that I can find or maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Down. We've got it. We've got a, a, a duck. We've got a, a duck grease mayonnaise, I think on drkilts.com and uh, Marie okay. Emmerich and I did a cookbook a few years ago and she's a rock star. Uh, you know, she's in the keto carnivore space. You know, she's helping so many young people kind of venture between uh, keto and carnivore and, and, and do that uh, for sure. But she's a hunter. She goes out there and bags a, a deer with her bows. And uh, and so I've learned a lot. I got keto for Maria. And then I, I ran into some guy doing carnivore like yourself. Look ripped. is like all he ate was meat. I'm saying that one's for me. Bing. This was uh, almost 14 years ago. Never felt better. I did it about age 55. I'm almost 68. Uh, and uh, it is just amazing. Yeah, if if red meat gave you heart disease, I think that you, me, Lily Kane, everybody should have been dead a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, sh uh, fat got blamed for what sugar does. And remember, sugar comes from plants, all plants, and it's made from amino acids. So yeah. the, the amino acids from the proteins we eat, and that's why people say I'm a carnivore, but I eat lean meat. It's not going to do the work. It's something called protein poisoning and rabbit starvation. Uh, that's a pretty amazing area that people need to look at. And uh, when I when I went carnivore, it's a game changer for me. I'm on a three day fast. I recommend two to three day fasting uh, once or twice a month. Uh, five to seven day fasting once or twice a year. It's just food freedom. I gave up coffee a year and a half ago. I kind of been uh, using a little bit of coffee time to time, but I minimize it. And I usually do decaf and I add butter or cream. 
Wow. Wow. Very, very good. Um, you and Dr. Anthony Chafee seem to have um, the same view on the fact that a carnivore diet, or excuse me, on the opinion that the carnivore diet is um, optimal for, for humans and that this is a species appropriate diet or the proper human diet, whatever you want to call it. Um, is that something that you could elaborate a little bit, a little bit more on? And I guess la last thing is um, specifically on the idea that we're at the top of the food chain. We're lions. That made so much sense when you and, and uh, I think it was, was it Chafee? Or, no, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was Dr. Anthony Chafee that you were speaking with and how, and how he was like, we're, this is just common sense. If like, do, do you think that you're up, that you're at the top of the food chain or not? I believe I am. We're, I, I believe we're created in God's image and that we're and, and that there's no animals that, that, are, that, are, that are better than us. We have dominion over the animals, biblically speaking, if you want to take that angle at it. And so, I mean, to, to me, it just makes common sense to eat like a lion if a lion is what's at the top of the food chain. I'm just curious if you have any more thoughts on, on that or well, start more elaborated on it. The ultimate predator is actually the plants. Mm. They control the world. We're just their fertilizer. <laughs> and, and so, sec, so we believe we're better than something else and we're not. We're equal to all things because all things are created by God. Mm -hmm. And so you must eat something that was alive, whatever that term is. And, you know, amoeba is alive and bacteria is alive and, and many bugs, are, you know, bugs are alive. And, you know, all, all animals and all plants and all, all living organisms are part of life. You mm -hmm. cannot live without eating some thing that was alive. Mm -hmm. And, and the interesting part is when you eat bacteria, yeast and viruses, well, they may survive and thrive in your body. They're not good for us. They're the, the, the probiotics and the microbiome is deadly for us in my opinion. Uh, but, uh, plants, uh, their seeds and nuts survive our gut. Uh, plus they have many chemicals that control and kill us. Just think about it. Name an addictive substance that comes from a cow. There aren't any. All right. Yeah. No, nobody, nobody, nobody gets addicted to ribeyes. They do not. But food addiction, by the way, I think it's the wrong term. Uh, it, you must be you must be addicted to food. The problem is you're fed the wrong food. You're you're fed a heroin, cocaine, marijuana, psilocybin, ayahuasca, LSD. That's what we're eating in our plants. Yes. The plants contain those chemicals to control and kill you. Mm -hmm. And they're going to make you change their DNA uh, or 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 bank their their seeds in a place that when Armageddon happens, they're going to thrive and survive. And and so um, when you die, they will grow out of you. The mold, bacteria, yeast, and viruses, all of those things are in us. They're part of us, and uh, and they will grow out of us, and we will be their fertilizer. So, yeah, you know, we evolved in the universe. Um, and I have no idea what people ate thousands of years ago, but our uh, anthropologic, and I know Ken Berry really looks at this, Anthony Chafee has done a lot on this. Many people have looked at this and, and that we likely came out of the trees to eat the grass. Eaters, not the grass. We are like wolves I'm sorry, and lions. Could you, I'm sorry, could you repeat that last part again? Uh, we likely came out of the trees okay. to eat the grass. Eaters, not the grass. Hmm. Remember, the pigs, cows, and sheep are grass eaters, and and we were meant to eat them, not right. the grass. And so we're now convinced uh, by the by the government, by the experts, uh, to eat a uh, primarily a plant based, low animal fat diet, and that is the single leading cause of all disease. Anthony Chafee and and Sean Baker and and even Ken Berry and I know some of those and Bella Ma and you know you don't have to be a doctor by the way and no. the the ability to gain knowledge today is 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 everywhere yep. and so I don't care what your degree is uh, if you you have the ability to learn any everything and anything and I listen to my patients all the time of what they're they're finding and what I can do to make it make it, you know learn from them uh, but but um, the evolution of humanity is hunters, not gatherers. But something happened at some point where the ability to find the animals got harder and it was easier just to be a sedentary agriculturalist, which developed many of the cultural belief systems that are focused on our politics or religions or social cultural norms, which create slaves, soldiers, peasants, prisoners, and the mighty elite 
that control the message and the money, which control the story. And that's why we're plant eaters. Wow. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that like when you, when you go on Google, a, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of what you see is funded by Bill Gates. It's fun. It's funded by people that are pushing plant-based agendas because there, there's a, there's a lot of money in it. You got a huge profit margin. There's, there's, there's a bigger profit margin in plant-based protein than there is in grass, grass fed beef protein. <laughs> well, and that's the sad part. Uh, but the people that are growing the food and doing the work at the level of the production of the food are, are living on substandards, uh, uh, substandard living and, and uh, mm-hmm. at, at the lowest economic level of the world. And so we have to realize that those people who produce our food uh, are living at standards that, that aren't, aren't right, in my opinion, and whatever we can do to improve that. And I think by going to your local farmer and utilizing local farming and ranching and those sort of things the very best. I'm not here to say you should never eat plants, by the way, because there are many people that live a long time as, as vegans, vegetarians, Mediterraneans, pescatarians, and we don't know how long carnivarians are going to live compared to them. There's no studies on that, truly. Right. right. And so we're, we're but I've, I've, all my, my arthritis, psoriasis, kidney stones, migraines, bowel bleeding all went away. And my depression, anxiety, fear, worry, ADHD, OCD, all those things went away. I've never felt better in my life. And I'm not going to sit back and say nothing. My job is to get up and speak the word. Uh, we are, we are lions through and through, and we've been lied to by the lions that want to keep us lined up weak and meek. And if you think about it, uh, slaves, soldiers, peasants, and prisoners are convinced to eat mostly plant-based diets, mm-hmm. low-fat diets. And then remember, they they did the work of of the in of the sugar cane, of the tobacco, making the rum, of the cotton, and all the other the wheat and everything else. And then they were made to eat it, which caused the diseases that the masters in producing the medicines and in the in the products that you know we we think are curing the diseases but they're they're only masking the symptoms to make you feel better while the disease is happening under the uh under the surface just like an iceberg the the huge part of the iceberg is is under the water absolutely my 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 whole, my whole goal is not to see what i can get away with and my prayer and my hope for all of our clients and something that we talk about often is don't try to see what you can get away with in terms of your diet see what try to find what's optimal what's what, what's what's optimal what makes what makes you feel the best versus what can you get away with and i and i love coming back to treat versus cheat because i agree with that there's a there's a difference between being being able to enjoy a treat for me a keto brick is a treat um a cheat is when you know that what you're eating is is hurting you but the pleasure is 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 worth it for you at that point in time i don't think i don't think that's a healthy outlook to life personally yeah and and i don't i don't use the word uh, and I think that's, see, everything is beginning in the word, right? Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word is, was, and always will be God. Yeah. Uh, we, we are the, we are the creators of the way and God is us. Mm-hmm. And when you have faith in God and, uh, and I, I espouse by many of the, the kind, generous, loving words of Jesus Christ, he's the master to me. He's the number one guy that didn't carry a sword or didn't require your money and uh, wanted everyone to understand that God is within them. And so when he, when he said the meek shall inherit the earth, what he was saying is that you are meek and weak, but God is within you. Once you understand that the earth is yours, you don't have to overcome any other human beings. You have to fix you. And that's what he gave us. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That, 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 that is one of the coolest thoughts that I've ever heard on John one, one as, as many times as I, I've just never thought of that verse that way before. <laughs> it, it, it really is. It gets back to the simplicity of Jesus. You yeah. know, he didn't write anything complicated. You, you need probably a page of what he said and that's all you need. And, yeah. and, and that's why I think it's important to why. read the new Testament and and or read excerpts of the new testament uh to give us more strength in life because it doesn't matter what your lifestyle vegan vegetarian mediterranean or whatever your economic status or your living status if you have the the understanding of the power of god within you you can overcome anything do you, do you think that if somebody has their faith figured out and their nutrition figured out that you're pretty much weathered to handle most of the storms that life would throw at you I think if you got faith figured out, that's first. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, nutrition is, a, I'm going to just say it's icing on the cake because the mind, the mind truly uh, uh, controls everything in the body. But if you look at people like Wim Hof, who really is a master of the meditation and, and the mindfulness, uh, it, it helps. But many of the spiritual people, um, I think, are really powerful at that. But I think when you add the nutrition, it's like the game changer of life. It'll, it'll, it'll shoot you out to the edges of the universe to see the true creation of everything. Yeah. You said that you, um, were you ever diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, anxiety? You said you, you, you mentioned a lot of things that improved after you went carnivore, right? Well, well, um, I, I, mean, I am a doctor and um, I kind of figured it out a little bit, but I was diagnosed with dyslexia and I say it in a way, very, very tongue in cheek, by the way, okay. um, you know, no one ever treated me for ADHD. I'm 67. You know, back then it was like, it was, they sent you the special education in the class, you know, in the front of the class with everyone that's watching you yeah. uh, can't read. Uh, and uh, at one point, um, I was uh, unruly. I uh, went on my, my adolescence. I was in a gang kicked out of school, um, huh. and, for breaking an entry. Uh, and, 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 uh, and then my, uh, one point I, and I was in a gang and, uh, this my father was in dog. jail. And, and so, I know. Wow. <laughs> well, but, but God gave me these experiences to guide me and make me stronger. And the experiences that you live help you look upon the rest of the world with more love and kindness. And, and that's really what we need to do more in this world is look at all humans with the same love and kindness and generosity that he meant judge, not yes, lest you be judged. But I say judge with love. That's, that's really the, if you can kind of pull it out to that level, stand still and know that God is within all of us. And, and that's why love and forgiveness are really the most important thing. It doesn't matter what anyone else has done. Love and forgiveness is the way. Hey, everyone. Coach Taylor Milton here. Welcome to Skull Bells TV, the official YouTube channel of supersetyourlife.com, where you're going to discover a weekly upload of quick and easy to follow workout tutorials featuring Coach Colt, myself, or one of our athletes to keep your workouts fun, practical, and effective. Our family's latest keto carnivore recipes that fuel Colt's competitions and keep myself and our kiddos strong and healthy. Video uploads of the supersetyourlife.com podcast, now over 100 episodes, your weekly dose of entertainment, education, and inspiration to fuel your life inside and beyond the gym, and much more. Last thing before we get into the video, we're asking a big favor from you. This has been working beautifully, so if you would please think of someone you care about that would benefit from this video, go ahead and smash that like button, click the share button and text this video to them. That would mean the world to us. And while you're at it, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss more exciting content from School Bells TV because our team has lots of meat and lots of muscle coming your way and I promise you won't want to miss it. When you hit the subscribe button, you'll see a bell icon pop up. You want to click that too so you're notified every time we release a new video. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world to us. Every like, share, and subscription helps our channel grow and supports our family's hard work. So thank you so much for doing your part too. That's all we ask. God bless you and please enjoy this video. I've written and co-written books. Um, I've been blessed and lucky to uh, have an amazing team that helps me put these together. I've written books on daily inspiration. So 20 years ago, I started doing a daily blog uh, called Mind, Body, Smile. And I was going through separation, divorce, um, hardship challenge within my life. You know, I thought the end of the world. Oh, my God. And, and uh, very depressed uh, therapy and a good friend of mine, uh, Ken, uh, um, uh, Craig Humphrey, uh, who's passed a cancer a few years ago, uh, taught me about uh, Buddhism, meditation and prayer. At that time in my life, I would call myself an atheist, although I was raised Catholic uh, mm-hmm. and and uh, and things and um and so uh through those experiences my blogging i used to write a daily poem and do a blog every day uh for about a year i've written my books called uh, daily inspirations daily intentions um and then a book on uh, living your best life uh, a little bit of my experiences and my view of the world uh books on keto and carnivore i've written uh and uh i i'm working on the babies for babies diet book. Uh, and again, I, I bring the ideas and the words, my team helps put the pictures and everything together. And, uh, I feel very blessed to bring these things together. 
Which one should I start with of your books? Oh, my wife, my wife is asking for Christmas ideas. <laughs> well, my daily inspirations book, I think is a good one because you can, you can underline it and write in it and things like that. It's good. Uh, my keto carnivore book, you know, I think it gives a little different approach to keto carnivore because, because I do not believe that sugar is the energy of our body. Just like amino acids, they must be converted to fat or we die. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's a good kind of take on my different approach to keto carnivore than, than most. Um, then we have something on audible. Um, I have one called the fertile feast, which is about uh, keto carnivore and fertility. Uh, more of a, more of a, a good audio book to listen to, but we need to be inspired. See book reading a book, listening to, and even, you know, blogging and listening to your blogs and in my blogs are so important. And, and, by reading books and listening to books, you build you build your brain, and the experiences of life. You need to you need to listen to other people's experiences, and when you read or listen, uh, you gain knowledge of the infinite knowledge of of humans in this universe, and then you get to ex explore your energy by writing and 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 drawing and painting and all these things. and And I think it's very important because we're all identical in our basic. Uh, structure and metabolic physiology. Yeah. And, and, and I don't think you have a metabolic disorder. You basically a plant and sugar poisoning. That's all that's going on with us. Right. Um, I just, yeah, my, my wife, my wife just purchased your book. <laughs> so it'll be here two weeks before Christmas. Oh my God. God bless you. No, you know, thank and, you. I, I, I love, I love the cover with the, with the tomahawk steak on it. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. so savage and the line in the background. Well, well, you know, this is, this is the basics. I mean, I say, you know, again, if you just eat ribeye steak, fatty ribeye steak, fatty ribeye steak, you must eat the fat. If you cook it and all the fat melts away and you don't eat the fat, you're not getting the very best. The adipose tissue contains minerals, vitamins, and all the building blocks to make a baby, by the way. So bears that, that get pregnant and hibernate, they lose fat while they're gestating and they deliver a baby in, in, in the cave and they do not eat piss or poop. And so they lose only fat. They lose no muscle mass and no bone mass. And, and, they're not, and, and they're not uh, drinking any of the uh, BCAAs that everybody at GNC is telling me that I'm supposed to drink. So I don't lose no, muscle when no, I fast. No, oh, wow. No, wow. No, wow. No, okay. No, no. Oh, you know, look at, I sell supplements, molecular fertility, nutritional <laughs> solutions for those people who aren't really in the carnivore space or the meat space and the fatty meat space or eating the liver. Um, they may get some benefits. Uh, but, but if I can inspire everyone to look at uh, Kiltz's keto carnivore, or the yeah. bacon, eggs, butter, beef, kilts is ice cream, salt. And the eyeballs basically also is for intermittent feasting. I recommend one meal a day or less. Mm -hmm. Fasting is the one of the best things you can do. I don't care what diet you have. Yep. The, the only thing truly for the elimination diet or the detox diet is don't eat for three to five days. It's rocking amazing. You must empty the gut to truly fast. Someone says, oh, I've been fasting for 24 hours. I get my blood work, but your gut still has a bunch of food inside of it. So yeah. your, your, your blood testing is measuring the, the, the foods that are being absorbed through the digestive system into your bloodstream. So that's not an adequate picture. And if you think about it, most human beings go not one day without eating throughout their lifetime. Most people are eating at least two to three meals a day the day they're born to the day they die. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Right. And so your gut is always full of food. So as long as the bucket is always full of food, you're always secreting amino acids, simple sugars, fatty acids, and all the, the chemicals and the antigens that come with that. And you're fermenting in your gut. Just right. think about this big ball of, of, of digestible plants and proteins. They're digesting, they're fermenting, and they're sending alcohol to every nook and cranny of your body. And if you're in utero, you're, you're getting bathed with the alcohol produced by your mom in utero. Wow. That, <laughs> that makes, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> All you need to eat in my opinion is about a fistful a day, depending on how much activity you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you make it bacon, eggs, butter, beef, and salt, 
your home run. And by the way, your body makes water. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that your body could make water. So your the mitochondria convert acetyl-CoA that comes from fatty acids. It does not come directly from sugars or proteins. Indirectly, it does. So your body requires fat in your body. And when it breaks down the fat, it makes acetyl, it, it makes a, acetyl-CoA out of that. And then it makes ATP, CO2, and water. You're making metabolic water every day. That's wow. why we shouldn't drink as much water. We drink too much water. Don't focus on water. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up too. I've, I've, I've noticed that. Um, I, I felt like before I went strict lion that I had, because because even even when I was mostly carnivore and I was and I, and I was taking bodybuilding supplements and a couple of, and a couple other things, but not a lot. It was pretty strict lion cutting pat cutting out that last 10 percent i noticed a lot of changes do uh going from going from two to three meals a day to one meal a day piece of cake if i wanted to fast way easier like if i have to skip a meal way easier um and and not not feeling like i need to be hydrated like every five minutes of the day i don't i don't know why but that changed when i went when when i went strict lion and maybe there was just some like a, a couple, a couple plants that I was still eating that it just like I needed to clean it up a little bit so that I could feel a little bit better and 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 learn my body inside and out, which is really what happens when you do this diet. Yeah, we don't really. I I think the the science of metabolism isn't correct. I think we've got it wrong, mm-hmm. and. I've got a couple of books. One is called the uh, Essentials of Glycobiology. Okay. And and the other is Introduction to uh, Glycobiology. And most people do not have not or do not have not or do not know anything about glycobiology. So glycosylation is far more important and relevant than protein production. Because it turns out that the damage to our proteins happens because of the wrong sugars in our body or too much of the sugars. And so, so, so the DNA directs the RNA, which directs the amino acids to produce proteins in the Golgi apparatus. And then the sugars, they attach to the amino acids and the proteins to give the proper shape and charge and function to the proteins. So the proteins become glycoproteins. And and so you've never hear anyone talking about glycoproteins, have you? No. And no one talks about glycobiology. There are there are there are billions, almost a trillion different glycoproteins in our body. Without sugars, you're only getting a few million protein variations. So by adding the sugars, they give immense diversity to the functions within our bodies. And I believe evolution, phenotypic changes are secondary to glycosylation. All you need to do is change a sugar on a red blood cell to change your blood type. Oh my gosh. A, B, and O, and A, B are determined by the sugars on your red blood cells, not the proteins. It's determined by the glycoprotein. So you're not changing your proteins, you're changing your sugars. So if we really can step back and realize that you can eat, you can eat pumpkin pie, you can eat with, with sugar, by the way, Mm -hmm. And you may be fine. It's not that consumption from time to time. That's the killer. It's when we become addicted to it because sugars are highly addictive. Because if you're in the ancient environment thousands of years ago and you come across a, a, a ripe, a ripe fruit tree, what's your brain say the moment you taste it? 
Oh, this is great. I never get this stuff. Where can I get more of this? That's correct. That's what your brain is saying. And so the reason your brain wants you to do that is because that is valuable sugar that is going to fatten you up so you can survive the next month, two or three. In the winter time, you likely lowered your metabolic rate because you rested more. And 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 so we we've got it wrong. If you think you're eating the fruit to provide the sugar to your bloodstream and your muscles or your cells are going to use that as energy, you're wrong. It must convert those in the liver to fat or you die. The function of insulin is to make fat. The function of the liver, primary function of the liver, I believe, is to make fat via insulin out of amino acids and simple sugars. It's a crazy concept and idea, but I, I will I will stake my my career, my 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 reputation and a billion dollars on on that because because there's something called hepatogenous diabetes. Have you ever heard of it? No. Hepatogenous diabetes. So as you develop liver failure, the insulin levels rise because your glucose and amino acid levels rise. Well, why would your amino acid levels and glucose levels rise when insulin's job is to put sugar into the cell and convert it to fat in the cell? But in a liver failure patient, they're cachectic and skinny. They lose all their fat because they can't make fat. Now, how about a type 1 diabetic? Huh. Are they fat or skinny? They're skinny because they can't make fat. But you give them insulin and they do a good job because most diabetics, like my sister, gained weight. Because the job of insulin is to make fat in the liver. Fatty acids, acetyl-CoA, in every cell of your body that has a mitochondria must have fat. Your brain does not burn sugar. I don't think so. Wow. Wow. But that's opposite and different of most people's belief system here. Would you agree? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very, very much so. It's a, it's a complete opposite. Um, a, a, side, a side note on insulin, too. Uh, being a being a bodybuilder, right? I I I know I know a lot of bodybuilders that inject insulin so that they can get bigger and so that they can be more so that they can become more competitive. I don't know if it's the insulin that is causing a lot of bodybuilders uh, to die young, or if it's the excess carbohydrate consumption that the steroids and the um, insulin is causing them to chronically overconsume. Not They're sure. They're probably you know. depositing intramuscular fat. Intramuscular nobody, nobody knows why they're dying. They're just getting heart attacks. Well, well, but the insulin's helping um, uh, uh, deposit intramuscular fat, mm -hmm. and and they're glycated, and they're they're developing a prion and amyloid deposits all over their body, including their their cardiovascular system and the neurologic system of our body. So you get an arrhythmia due to that. Plus eating eating plants break down to sugar. So I don't care what you can look like the best person in the universe. You're the, 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 the size and shape of your body doesn't determine your health. Yes. Correct. I, I mean, you can look like the very best person, the healthiest person in, your, in the world, but that you could drop dead because, and fat people are not diseased by the way, that fat is not the cause of disease. What I'm you got there. I'm showing you a picture of uh, coach Bronson's book on page 12. And he has a picture of uh, two bodybuilders on it, a female and a male, and um, actually goes into what their blood work looks like and how unhealthy both of these people are, even though they look like the healthiest people on the planet. Yep. Health and wellness begins in the mind. Exercise can be a leading cause of disease and death. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yep. it's completely unnecessary. And being skinny is unnecessary. And if you're not fat in a famine, you're fertilizer fast. Mm -hmm. If you're not fat in a famine, you're fertilizer fast. That's so so, that's so remember, good. remember the human body wants to be fat because fat is the fuel and building blocks of every single cell of your body. Skinny is deadly. 
Yeah. I don't tell anyone to lose weight and be skinny. I remind them that their best thing they can do is go carnivore. And in two to four weeks, they'll feel the very best. Keto helps. Fasting helps. Add the fat, critical, one-to-one -one at least of, of volume uh, is the way I look at it. And it's the white stuff. And raw is better than cooked. Look at uh, Pottinger's cats. Pottinger, uh, basically. Wow, I like where this conversation is going. Yeah. I get so much crap for eating raw meat. Okay. Oh no, <laughs> raw meat is the very best. I think because when you cook yeah. meat, you probably disable the and you you disrupt a lot of the minerals, vitamins, and in the in the structures of the proteins and amino acids that your body requires. And remember, the essential amino acids uh, must come in as, as in full structure. But when you cook them, you likely break them down, destroy them, and damage them. So you're not getting the very best you can get. And most people, when they cook their meat like that, don't get the fat anyway. And you got to eat the fat. Fat is critical. If you feed fat to a cow, they will die. Huh. And the reason they will die is because they require the microbes in the gut. But when you eat fat, it kills the microbes in the gut. And they require the microbes in the rumen to break down the complex carbs. When we eat the fat, it kills the microbes, which I believe the microbes in our gut are deadly. I do not believe that the probiotics and the microbiome is good for us. I think it's deadly. Yeah. I used to supplement fiber, man, five years ago because <laughs> yeah. it, was, it, was it was just one of those things everybody was doing. And, and oh, and so many people are doing and fiber in particular, I'm, I've noticed is what my body is most sensitive to. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what your approach generally is when you have someone that's on a standard American diet, like gravitating towards um, to, towards towards the way that you recommend. But uh, Richard Smith from the UK and yep, yep, an yep. Mm -hmm, and another of other carnivore coaches and, and nutritionists will recommend um, taking out anything that could be wreaking havoc ha havoc in their gut, and so they're looking at more like. Um, leptins um those uh th those anti-nutrients that you were describing earlier that that are that are wreaking havoc in the, havoc in the gut and and now after what you just explained it makes sense that it takes it takes months to get fat adapted because there's so much damage that needs to be reversed and is one and is eating pumpkin pie one time gonna ruin all that no, no. <laughs> but it's i don't use the word fat adapted oh, okay because it's not true okay your body only burns fat it doesn't ever burn sugar. Okay. Okay. Now, do you have fat on your body? Yeah, a little bit. Well, of course you do. <laughs> but, but if you have no fat on your body, remember you're dead. I think I'm like twelve percent fat now. Yeah. Yeah, but 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 fat. no fat is dead. Yeah. Okay. And so, so you're you're actually plant poisoned. So you're reducing, eliminating the poisons in your body to make you healthy. You're not adapting and going from burning sugar to burning fat. This is why I think we've got it wrong. But again, try to make sense of it. You're going to burn sugar one minute and burn fat the, the other. Yeah. Why? So, bur so burn burning fat, being fat adapted is what we already are. We're, 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 we're animals that burn fat. What you're, what you're, what you're, what you're, I think what you're describing is, is that you, we're, we need to undo the damage to get back to being fat adapted, which is where we should be in the first place. Right, right. But when we use fat the word fat, word. <laughs> we should change it. I think yeah. we're, 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 we've detoxified our bodies. We've eliminated the plant toxins. That's why when Anthony Chafee says, you know, plants want to kill you, it, it really is true. Yeah. You never have to eat a plant, but if you eat only protein, you're in bad shape. And there's no such thing as a plant protein. How do you measure a plant protein? How do you know what they put in a jar is a plant protein? Yeah, that one's always confused me too. <laughs> there's no way. And plus, plus protein focus is stupid. Is the like your body requires fat. And, and fat tastes great. Like it tastes oh like my God. Oh my God. <laughs> when, 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 I, when I cook steaks here, I give the, I, I, I get, I get, I always give the part that I overcooked the most, the, the lean protein to my dog and the, and, and all the stuff that's raw and all this stuff, like the fattier stuff, like, man, no, I'm eating that. Are you kidding me? Like she could, she, she loves, she loves the stuff that I overcooked. Okay, great. You can have it. No, I'm eating the blue stuff, man. Yeah. And uh, Ponger's cats basically did a study on cats where he fed them uh, cooked meat and pasteurized milk versus raw uh, milk and meat. And uh, generationally, the the uh, the cats that that ate the cooked and and the uh, the pasteurized uh, milk and, and meat 
um, they got sick and they passed on to generations of sickness. And when they change, uh, they improved. And so my bet is we're, we're supposed to be eating, we're supposed to be eating fatty meat. Yeah. That's my, my belief. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. And, wow. and raw and raw fatty meat is the best and throwing an egg or two and, uh, throwing a little bit of, uh, of Baja gold, uh, uh, salt, <laughs> uh, the very best and, and, and keep yourself a salt, salt lick. I got my salt lick here. Uh, it's awesome. I just, I've got a mixture. Actually, I love Malden Redmond's and now I go, I've got, uh, some, uh, Baja gold and, and this is what I do all day. Holy crap. Okay. So I, I, so I, I, I am a salt nerd, man. I love my salt. I have not heard of a salt lick. What is, what is this? Well, what is, no, I just got a bowl, a bowl. Uh, okay. There's a kilts plate. I put in the bowl. I put a mixture of Redmond's Malden and uh, I just throw in some uh, mineral sea salt uh, from Baja gold and okay. uh, I mix it up and uh, it's really good alone, by the way, I enjoyed it and I love the flakes and I'm going to bring this to, uh, I have a dinner meeting at about uh, five plus uh, where we're doing a, uh, a rib roast oysters and lobsters with butter and, um, there, there might be a, a French fry or two there, but uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Well, this yeah. has been this has been such a pleasure. I am so sorry. We are we are coming up on an hour, and so we better we better call it a wrap right now. But what's the what's the hottest project that you're that that you're working on right now, Doctor Kiltz? What, well, what, are, what are you most excited about? I'm just excited about sharing these ideas of health and wellness to everyone in the world, and they can become their own doctors, their own directors, their own producers, their own life creators, and, and not only nutrition, but faith and kindness and, and uh, whether it's, uh, it's creativity and artwork or anything in life, you know, you just got to get, and you got to love work. And so you know, I think it's my sharing this, the word is, is really the way, and that's what I'm most passionate about. So what am I doing tomorrow? The same thing I did today, inspiring people to uh, take control of their beautiful, amazing lives. Hey, man, I love it. We'll, we'll, we'll either do it until we die or until Jesus comes back. One of the two. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, live life as if tomorrow's the last and you got to enjoy every bit of it. So God bless you, my friend. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Dr. Kills. God bless you. Pleasure. Well, that's it for this week's session, everybody. Thanks a lot for listening and make sure to let us know what you thought. You can do that directly from your podcast app or DM Coach Mark or myself on the gram. You can also email your feedback, questions for us, and more specific topics you'd like us to teach on next. TikTok. If you are on TikTok, so are we. We are at Carnivore Coach's Corner. We are throwing out bite-sized carnivore tips from top nutritionists and coaches like Dr. Kiltz and also athletes that are putting into practice what we preach on this channel. We're showing lots of meal prep, cooking tips, and budgeting hacks. Lately, we're also busting bad coaches too. We're still doing that. So warning, if you are a bad online coach spreading misinformation, we are totally going to call you out. If you're in need of some gym motivation, look no further than our workout podcast called the SupersetYourLife.com podcast. We are well over 200 episodes over there, and it's available on the same platform that you're listening to now. Just type Superset Your Life, all one word, into your search bar, and you'll see our black and white podcast logo pop up. It's a podcast specifically recorded to listen to while you work out. We regularly interview professional bodybuilders and judges, top nutritionists, leadership experts, stand-up comedians, and top athletes from SupersetYourLife.com. We keep the focus on health first bodybuilding, faith, and family. My wife Taylor and I are the hosts of that show as of three years and growing, and Coach Mark Ennis has been an enormous part of all we do there as well. Coach Mark and I are both on Instagram and offer private one-on-one -on -one consultations as well as coaching services. Links to schedule coaching calls can be found on our Instagram bios or in the show notes of this podcast. One last reminder before we sign off. Leaving a review only takes about 10 seconds. So if you're on Spotify, where you can see in the show notes, right below that, it says Q&A. Bam. Just like that, you can tell us exactly what you think. And we will always respond when we record the following week, either by reading your review out loud or by discussing the topic that you would like to know more about, or even by getting to work on whatever critiques that you have about how we can continue to improve this show. And that's how we communicate as a dialogue, not a monologue, in this intimate conversation that we have back and forth called Carnivore Coaches Corner. 
Share this with a friend if you found it helpful, and we'll catch you next week on session number 36.